So uh, the draw of this thing, let me put this on. I'm just going to, I'm not going to put it on all the way because there's plenty of videos that show that. This is actually a trick that a customer taught me just recently. Uh, if you want to just run out the door, take out the garbage, or run to the convenience store real quick, here's a good easy way to put it on. Just tuck it in like that and wrap it around and strap it. And actually, if you're wearing jeans and you got a belt loop, it's even better if you run it through that, just that one single belt loop right there. That makes it even more stable. And uh, strap it on, and look what happens. It's on, you're ready to go, and it comes off even faster. So you can go to the convenience store, take the garbage out, and boom. So anyway, the draw. This video is going to get long, watch. I'm trying to keep it short, but here we go. Uh, what makes this unique? The way that it draws. Uh, have you ever noticed uniformed officers walking around town? They have their gun out away from their body like that. That's so they can get their thumb back there. When you're carrying concealed carry, you can't do that because the gun has to lay flat against your body. So the way they train you to draw, when you draw, you put your thumb on the back of the slide, you draw up, you wrap your thumb, can you see that? You wrap your thumb around and then you come up and fire. In a high stress situation, you know, when your life is about to end as far as your mind is concerned, those extra little movements can be tricky and uh, have cost people their lives. People that get a bad grip on the gun or even worse, drop the gun. Once a gun comes out in a situation where somebody else has a gun, once that other person sees the gun, it's going to be answered with gunfire. So you better be doing this thing right. You only get one chance. So what makes this holster different is that we actually take that concept, not only being able to get your thumb back there, but we take it even a step further than that. Watch what happens when I draw this. When, when uh, you, 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 uh, you lead with your thumb. You search with your fingers. So if you're not looking down there, what you do is you come down, and as soon as your finger finds that gun handle, your thumb knows exactly what to do. It's like reading Braille. And you dig down in there. And I just did that quick. But you see what uh, happens? Let me hide my, my pale belly there. It turns into a cone. Now let me do it slow. What happens is your thumb comes in, and the moment that your thumb goes behind the... And your gun kind of helps, too, because it guides it in there. But the moment that your thumb penetrates behind the gun, between the gun and the back plate, you see what happens? It begins to cone. The deeper it goes, the more it cones. And so even if you're coming up here, no matter what, what angle you come in, there's, there's lots of room for error in here. Well, actually, there's this much room for error. That cone is going to guide your thumb down into the proper firing position every single time. It's really hard to not get a perfect grip on this gun. And uh, let me talk a little bit about why that's important. If you've ever taken a training class, if that's not the first thing they teach you, well, they teach you over and over again the importance of having proper grip placement on the gun. And, and I don't think even most trainers really understand the dynamics behind all of that. The idea is to, you, what you're doing is you're lining the barrel up with your index finger. And your index finger is connected to your brain in a way that none of your other fingers are connected to your brain. And there's a reason for that. Uh, thousands of years ago, imagine, we're in the jungles and we're hunting, and one of the people in the party sees prey, you know, uh, something that we want to hunt, off in the distance. It's a tiny little speck. We use our index finger to point, and our index finger is extremely accurate to find that prey. That's how we survived, and it's to communicate to everybody else in the tribe exactly what you see. So you can say the same about tiny little poisonous bugs, maybe, on the ground. You need to be able to point out those little dangers. It's extremely accurate. So the idea is that when you have proper grip placement, and guns are made, you know, uh, so that, you know, it feels right when you're in the proper grip placement. However, if I take this gun and I move it out of kilter just a little bit, did you see it move? It was like a millimeter. It was a hair. It was very little. And what happens is it's a hair at the muzzle, but it, it's not lined up with your finger. It's off alignment with your finger by a hair here. However, when that triangulates out, even just a few, few feet away, you are now feet off target. And uh, actually, here's a great way to explain it. We've all heard these stories where you have like five cops, right? And the, you have one bad guy. And the bad guy, he's, he's shooting at the cops all of a sudden. And the five cops, you know, they're human beings. They're going to go through the same emotions that we all do. Well, hopefully you do. Cause if, you, if you're not freaking out a little bit, you're probably a sociopath. But uh, So anyway, all five cops draw their guns. And they fire. And they unload on this guy because he's shooting at them. And they miss them, and they, maybe they only hit them once, and they fire like 100 rounds. And how do you fire 100 rounds and only hit the guy once, or not at all? And the reason is, is because those police, when they train, they train with the proper firing position. You even have those high-stress training with someone blowing a blowhorn behind you. 
It's not the same as real life. Uh, most officers actually never have to fire their weapon in their whole uh, careers. And when they do, it's just one in a once-in-a-lifetime thing, the real situation. So there's really no way to completely prepare for that kind of thing. So what happens is those officers miss because when they drew, they were off kilter a little bit. In their mind, in their brain from training, they're pointing, they're aiming with their finger, you're not even thinking about it, but their finger's pointing at the bad guy, but the gun is off kilter and they're missing them by feet. So that's why it, it took so many rounds to, to stop the gun. This holster, it's, it's kind of like cheating. It removes that, it removes that uh, element of uh, mistake. I mean, if you get this thing, it's just, it's, it's almost impossible to get a bad grip. So that's very important, and I think that's what this thing should really be popular for. So I want to hear more people talk about that. So uh, let's get into the next thing, uh, comfort. That's what everybody seems to talk about. Why is this thing so comfortable? Uh, and there's a reason why it is. For one, years and years and years of work. And for two, actually comfort was taken seriously because like everything else in this holster, from the materials that we chose to even the type of holster that it is, it's clothing independent. The reason it's clothing independent is because the philosophy, the core philosophy behind everything in this holster is about that moment of self-defense. And uh, comfort was considered a tactical advantage by reasoning of a less fatigued officer is a tactical advantage. So that was enough for us to say, okay, let's tackle comfort full force. Uh, there's five different strategies that we used to accomplish the comfort that this thing has. Obviously, uh, one strategy is the, uh, the fact that it's custom built for the different body sizes, so everything runs efficiently. Uh, another thing is the gear off body design. The gear it never touches your body. Let me throw this on. Actually, let me throw it on outside so you can kind of see. And no matter what size gun you have, big gun, small gun, the holster is built for the gun, built for the magazine, or no magazine, and it's built for the body. And uh, one another reason that we want to keep the gear off the body is, uh, and this happens, believe it or not, I've heard stories. I've uh, one that comes to mind is a. Uh, a guy who was carrying small of the back and uh, was in a hand-to-hand -hand situation, it was non-lethal, and got thrown onto his back and the gun went into his kidney and it was a debilitating injury. It took him out of the fight. So these things are serious. Uh, that won't happen with this holster. There's a series of, uh, again, material choices. Uh, there's a hard material here and as you go back through the holster, it's layered. And another thing, it looks thick, doesn't it? But it's not thick. When it's pressed up against the body, it gets extremely thin. But it's layered. You go from hard material to soft material to hit the body. Like other traditional holsters, you're basically putting a hard object, the gun, into another hard object, like a Kydex holster, and then putting it on a soft object. So we kind of thought that through. We're trying to take a hard object and attach it to a soft object. So in doing that, we blend that in so that that hard object isn't touching your body. So those days of uh, guns poking into you are over with this holster. So gear off body design, that's a huge part of, uh, of the comfort issue. Maneuverability. Again, the fact that these are custom built for all the different body sizes, one thing that comes into mind is the being able to maneuver with it. And uh, a lot of testing was done with like literal ground and pound training. So guys were on the floor wearing these holsters with their gear, you know, going through hand-to-hand -hand combat situations. So you need to be able to maneuver. There's no position that you're going to get in where it's, it's uh, you know, not going to function or whatnot. Uh, another part of maneuverability is the fact that it is gear or it is uh, clothing independent. So you have the freedom to wear this thing anywhere. I mean, like I said, we have a lot of people that wear small, the back, three o'clock, wherever. If you can reach the gun, it'll run there. Uh, but on top of that, you have the ability to adjust it. You can move it down, up, to the side, diagonally, this way. You can wear it at 12 o'clock, 12.01, you know, 3 o'clock, or 2.59. It, there's so many options. Uh, another thing is if you're wearing it, you're wearing it eight hours, you're wearing it up here, and you, know, you want to change it to a different position for the second half of your 16-hour shift, you can wear it over here. You know, wear it over here. So that helps with comfort. And... Uh, Fourth thing, and probably the biggest thing, is weight distribution. Again, that's where all these years and years 
of uh, design work went into it. We actually had engineers that were helping us out with this thing, which is pretty neat. People were helping us for free. It was pretty amazing. Uh, all the arches and the curves and everything in this holster is all surrounded around weight distribution. And uh, actually, here's a better way to explain it. This is something I just recently thought of. Uh, let's say this is an analogy. You take a two-pound steak, and I know this is silly, but stay with me. So take a two-pound steak and attach it to your belt like a traditional holster. Now, anybody that's new to concealed carry, or even old-timers who, if you think back, you'll remember, those first couple of days of carrying, it was tough. That weight, after, after an hour, it's no big deal. Two hours, three hours, four hours, ten hours, that really starts weighing on you. And then day after day, you know, your leg is getting sore. The first day, your leg is going to be sore. Eventually, your muscles adapt, you build up strength and everything, but forever that thing is always off kilter. It's always anchored at one point. Now, even if you take uh, those holsters that have two clips, that's to distribute weight. You're still, all the, that weight is anchored at these two little points, which is on one section of your body. What this holster does, again with the, let me strap this on here, again with it being custom built for every body size, is it's attached Actually, and here's another interesting point. Even other uh, clothing independent holsters out there, the weight is distributed off of two points with the gear hanging in the middle, sort of hanging off of those two anchors. This isn't. This is distributed all the way across from the bottom to the top. It's holding on to the maximum amount of muscles possible. There's a thing called perceived weight. Obviously, you know, we're not magicians. We can't change the weight of your gear. But we can change the perceived weight. And like I was saying, back to that steak, it's the same as taking that steak that was hanging off of there, that two pound steak, and eating it and taking that into your body and into your belly and now it's become a part of your core weight. Now it's balanced and you don't even feel the weight anymore. Obviously this isn't like eating your gun, but it's damn near close because of so many muscles that this thing is riding on. It's kind of like you know two people carrying something next to 10 people carrying something. You think two muscles compared to 10 muscles it becomes perceived weight becomes less. So that's a huge part. You're good. That's one thing you'll notice right away when you get this holster and you put your gear into it, whatever holster you were carrying before, you're going to notice a dramatic difference in the way that that thing, the weight of that gear. It's almost magical. So fifth thing, uh, fifth strategy for comfort, heat and sweat channeling system. And uh, the materials on this holster, the, the material on the front is actually different than the material on the back, and it's for a reason. The material on the front is, was chosen because of the way that it grabs onto your clothing and it keeps everything stable. And I hear this from a lot of customers, it actually helps keep your pants up, you know, it's, it's kind of neat. Uh, the back of the, of the holster, which goes against your body, there's these little designs in here, and those aren't there for looks. The company that, that uh, created this material is here in America and they did a lot of research into this and a lot of development on this material and uh, those those aren't designs those are functional uh, along with the antifungal and all the other space age cool stuff with this uh, material what those channels do is uh, they're, they're micro grooves and they actually channel away heat and sweat away from your body uh, rather than other materials, you hear about that sweat wicking. Well, what sweat wicking? I mean, the, the way to say that is sweat soaking. It soaks the sweat up into the holster. It makes it kind of stinky. This thing will never get stinky. Uh, I have one that I've been wearing for three years straight. Uh, and this sounds nasty, but I've never washed it. I've never washed it for a reason because I want to see how long it'll go. And I'm telling you, I can hand that thing to you. You'd never know it was never washed. It's just, it's fresh. It's amazing. But uh, the channeling system, not only does it uh, channel away head, sweet, uh, sweat and heat, I can't speak, but uh, it helps in the stability too. And other thing cool is no matter how much you sweat in this thing, or if you sweat like crazy in a hot environment, then you go into an air-conditioned environment, it will actually dry off while you're wearing it. It's pretty crazy. But you know, here's the main reason I think that we chose that material, because no matter how much you sweat, you smell sweat like crazy. If you're in a situation where you gotta defend your life and you're sweating, when you go to draw your gun, that sweat, that liquid, will have no effect on the stability of this holster. It will never slip and slide. When you go to draw that gun, it comes out just as smooth as it did when it was dry, which is extremely smooth. 